Yeah, okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, yeah, it is afternoon. Uh, welcome to Team Valley MOT. This is episode 35. Yeah, okay. Um, unfortunately, uh, you have to put up. You have to put up with me today. So, what is going on today? Um, we'll start over here, Ed. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Mercedes Benz Sprinter. It came in last week for uh, the handbrake and also the engine management light on. Um, the fault code that it had uh, was saying that it had a, a problem with possibly the net manifold. So when it's got that problem on, what we do is we smoke test them. Uh, the net manifolds down the back there, you, you can't really see a lot of them. But what we did was when we smoke tested it, because um, the, what the smoke test does, it, it confirms whether it's cracked or not, which, which they, do, they do suffer from. When we smoke tested it, the first thing it did was it actually started coming up the exhaust. So we found another problem with it in that, if you can look at the, the front here where the pipe goes into the, uh, the front of the DPF, there's a lot of soot around there. So the exhaust's cracked there, uh, and also the flexi here, that's starting to feel as well. So we'll fix them two things on the exhaust, put the exhaust back on, and then we'll smoke test it again. I still do think it's got a problem with the inlet manifold, but before we can test any further, we need to fix that first and then put the, put the van back together. Uh, the handbrake's the compensator. Again, um, something to suffer from is there's a compensator underneath because you, you've got a, a cable from the handbrake lever to the compensator, which goes to the, the, the two back brakes. Um, that's actually, it's just actually broken on this one. The spring's failed on it, so the handbrake's not working. Um, compensator, I'll be here tomorrow for it. Get that on, um, and then hopefully we'll pull the van back together tomorrow and do some more testing, testing on it, make sure that's sorted. So that, that's, that, that's that one. Um, this one here, uh, there's, we've taken the gearbox out of it. It does need a clutch and a flywheel, but there's, there's other problems with the van which need sorting before we, we put it back together. So that one's in process. I'm not going to that one too much because it's quite long-winded. Um, hopefully more, you might have seen that one last week. I think more of them probably explained what was going on with that one. Um, lovely Golf R, sorry, it's not Golf GTI underneath the ramp here. Um, so this one's in for an MOT test. Paul's also fitting the Can Phantom at the minute. That's getting the Can Phantom. Uh, so it's through it, a car sales company. Uh, so we'll get the Can Phantom in first. MOT this afternoon. Um, and then I believe that's sold. That's, that's why that, that one's getting done. Um, nice looking car, that. Nice looking car. Um, a lot of MOTs today. And he's pretty much been tied up most of the day and he will be probably in the middle of the afternoon with MOTs. Uh, that one's a, a little DS3 for MOT test. He's just pulled a, a Nissan out there. Uh, well, that one's good to go. Um, so yeah, not sure what's, what that one needs yet, but he's, he's just starting that one to, to log on. Um, this one was in last week. You may have seen it on, on, on a video last week. Pretend maybe he's maybe not. So this one, the customer's brought in for a fault with the offside front window. Um, basically, when you operate the window, it just makes a, a, a lot of crunching noises. Um, as you can see, you've got a motor in the door there with the electric windows, but that motor um, works, uh, a, if you like, a, a mechanical or the mechanism there. Um, so that's the new mechanism right to go back into the car. Uh, it's already stripped down, um, so we'll get that fitted this afternoon. Uh, all being well, uh, that, that one will be ready, in, ready on later on today. Um, nice VW here. So Andy MOT'd this one this morning, it's already been MOT'd. Um, but the customer's also requested that it be serviced. It's getting a timing belt and a water pump as well. Um, we like to replace timing belts and water pumps together. Um, it's, it, it, it's common practice. Um, it also makes good sense as well for reliability. Um, with a water pump being driven off the timing belt, uh, you replace them both. And what that means is obviously, because you can cause problems if you only do the belt on them because um, with a water pump afterwards plus as well as that it's it's preventive maintenance as well as that uh, you know because the water pump may legally at a date and then to do the water pump you're taking the belt off again so it does it, do, it does, does help the customer with preventive maintenance um nice transport of that with the uh, conversion in the back there nice car nice van sorry um ashley signs uh again we've got a couple of couple of videos in there this one's got a problem with the handbrake so Ken's just in the minute of investigating the handbrake fault at the moment. 
Um, again, like the, like the sprinter, they've got to compensate underneath as well. Uh, they can be prone to that being seized, but um, we think that the handbrake's not working at all, so we need to, we'll have to strip it down, investigate what's going on, and then speak to the, 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 the company, the, the one of the companies, and see what uh, see where we go with that one. But like I say, Ken's just literally put that one on the ramp. He's just in the process now of, of checking the operation of all the brakes, the handbrake, etc. Yeah. Um, Fifth Avenue Flowers, again another veto. Um, this one's been in for routine service. Uh, was anything on the health check on this one, Cal? Red some pads, yeah. So health check, health check at first, then it's been serviced. So once we have break work, um, I'll get a customer after lunch, speak to the company that owns it, see if we can get authorization. We'll get that done today, uh, get, it, uh, get it back on the road. Um, it's important that you, you know we'll keep, we'll keep these vehicles running. Uh, as, um, as reliably as possible. Um, but again, reading stuff today, there's a lot of good stuff in the day. It's all like service work, repairs, MOTs. It's always good for the lads on a Monday, um, coming in after the weekend, just get a nice good day, get everything through the workshop, get it sorted. Um, and that, you know, not a lot of diagnostic work on the day, which, which slows the workshop down. Um, the G-Wagon you can probably see is turned around. Um, so that was uh, work on over the weekend. I'm not going to get into that one too much because, as you know, Marvin talks about this one a lot. But as you can see, it does move, so it's turned around. Um, Marvin will probably explain a little bit more when he comes back what, what's been going on with that one. But, um, yeah, good news, it moves. Yeah, yeah. There we go. What? Uh, again, another van, uh, another company van uh, in for engine management late on. Uh, it's also due an MOT test. So with this one, I'll be getting health checked, um, diagnosed this afternoon. And then we'll do a pre and we'll turn as well. Uh, the customer's asked us before we do anything just to make sure it's it, it's worthwhile fixing. Um, you know, uh, it's you know, so we'll, we'll put a list on it, uh, go back with them costings. Uh, hopefully, it, it'll, it'll be repairable. Again, another good company, uh, good company um, on the team value here. Um, this one's just come off the ramp, straight for MOT test. Um, so I haven't seen the, the certificate for that one yet, but I'll catch up with Andy uh, after we've finished here and see what that one needed, if anything. Um, behind these two, you've got the little alto in the corner there. Uh, that one needs quite a bit of work. Uh, I'm in the middle of costing that one up at the minute. So I'll get the estimate finished for that one. And then we'll go to the customer and see, uh, see what I want to do with the repairs. This one again is, is finished from last week. Um, where it's, you can probably see it's had tyres on, uh, the brakes on you on there, it's had front and rear brakes. Um, it had an injector fault as well, I believe. I think you saw this one on the ramp uh, with, with Mickey and, and Marv last week. Uh, I, I'm fairly sure that, that one's ready to go now. It was done over the weekend, so apologies if, I, if I'm not speed with it. It's just, um, it was worked on over the weekend, but I, I, I'm fairly sure that one's ready to go. Um, Ford Transit was recovering last Thursday, I think, this one. Um, there's a fault with the gears. Uh, the gears are stiff and difficult to change. That one's in the diary for tomorrow to be looked at. Um, so as I was on that, on, of course, it'll be a health check, diagnose the problem, then we'll go to the customer with costings. Um, you hear me talk about health checks a lot. I, I think a health checks, you, you know, is, is necessary. You know, um, what, what we like to do is, unless it's a, a wipe, a blade, a bulb, or a top up, um, even if it comes, you saw the, the BMW for the window regulator there, even though that's in for a regulator, we'll still give it a health check just to make sure that we're giving that customer back their car and it's, you know, it's not, not unsafe, um, et cetera, you know. Um, but, I, you know, it's, I think it's, it's important that, that we get these, these cars and vans health checked. Um, VW Passat, straightforward, four-wheel alignment on this one. Um, customers report that it's not driving quite right, so we're going to try four-wheel alignment. Uh, it'll get that, that done this afternoon. Um, as with the alignment, we'll make sure everything's okay with it, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get that one sorted. Again, another relatively uh, straightforward, easy job for today. Um, this one was the, the Mini from last week. Uh, so it uh, was suffering from glow plug fault, I think it was cylinder three and four. Um, however, what we've, what we've done with this one is the customer has asked us to replace the four glow plugs. Again, as with the, the water pump, it's, it's preventive maintenance. You know, it's also, um, you know, because you cover three and four in it, and then one and two or one might go. So when we do jobs like this, we'll always give the customer the option, do they do want to do what it needs, or if it, we feel it's preventive maintenance to keep that, that car on the road and stop it coming back in, you know, we'll advise. In this case, the customer has asked to replace the four. Um, we had a little bit of trouble getting the glow plugs out, which these do suffer from, um, and you've just got to be a bit rough for them. So what you do is, you, you know, you have to forcibly remove them. Three of them came out difficultly, 
Um, there was one which which was really difficult to get out, um, but Marvin was in on Saturday, got that out, um, and then what we'll do is we we'll redressed all the threads, um, make sure that the you know the, the, the glow plugs have cut nicely back in, and put the four glow plugs in it, erase the faults, uh, and the customer will get that one back tomorrow. That's ready to go. He's picking that up. I've spoken to him this morning. Uh, he's picking that up tomorrow. So that's that one. Um, Range Rover Sport with no suspension for a change, Craigie. Um, yeah, so this one's in with us. It'll get diagnosed this afternoon. Uh, I think it had been for an MOT, um, and then it just came into us like this. So as you can see, that there's no suspension on it. It's 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 totally down. I think it, it looks like it's probably leaned to leaned to one side a bit. However, it's it's got no suspension. Suspension faults on the display. We we talk about these that they suffer from um, compressor faults, air leak sensors, etc. So there's quite a few things that, that that they suffer from. We'll see which one it is, of course. Get it uh, get it looked like get it diagnosed get it costed up uh, speak to the customer um, and then, then see where we go from there still look at that one so I, I, I'm not entirely sure what it needs this one uh, was started on Saturday and it's been completed today um, you've probably not seen this one this has had a clutch and a flywheel uh, with it being a van it's done a few miles uh, so the clutch and flywheel is now done on it uh, it's been road tested by Michael once and that is ready to go back to the customer. We'll inform them later on today that one's good to collect. Hopefully get rid of that one today. I'll get that picked up today. If not uh, today, I'll probably be tomorrow. Nice little VW up, another good regular customer of ours. So this one's been MOT this morning. Um, it's failed on a front tire and the washer's not working. And um, but we've also reported that again, like, like I said earlier on, the offside tire is only just legal, it's only just past the MOT. So again, we've either advised the customer once one on two tyres it, it's nice to put tyres on it as a pair I, I know it's, it's it's not necessary but I think it just helps the car drive better um, you know because when you put a new tyre and a semi-worn tyre on they can cause a little bit of a handling imbalance um, however again like I said to you earlier um, you know if we didn't put a tyre on this today the customer would have probably been back in three or six months want the other one on um, so, so we were putting two tyres on that one um, nice little clean car that one uh, other than that, it was, it was mechanically sound for the MOT. Um, there's a couple on the end there, so you've got the milk float, which has been with us a while. Um, that one's got an engine fault on it. Uh, I spoke to the, to the company this morning. That one is probably going to go back to Fiat, because um, the vehicle is still under warranty. Uh, get Fiat to have a look at it and see what's going on with that one, so that, that one will be, be removed from site. We'll not be going any further with that one. The APM cleaning van behind it, that had a boost pipe fit this morning. Uh, we've put two white blades on it and a couple of bulbs. So again, boost pipe on, uh, faults have been erased, has been test drove. Uh, so that one will go back to the customer this afternoon. That one's ready to go. Um, this one, you probably saw it uh, on a couple of videos last week. Um, it had uh, quite a lot of work done in around the, the gearbox area. That's now completed. Um, but the, when it's been parked in the warehouse over the weekend, They've noticed a couple of spots, what looks like pink coolant on the on the warehouse floor. Now with this one, with, with the, the gearbox, um, it's pulled lots of pipes and wiring horses, etc. So um, they've brought it back to us today. We'll just it could be it could be just residence residue, you know. But we'll just make sure that um, it hasn't got a coolant leak. We'll get it sorted, of course, and back to uh, get back to yes windows this afternoon. So that wants to go back through the workshop. Renault Clio. Uh, Andy's test drove, sorry, Andy's MOT this one this morning. Now, the customer asked us to have a look at the, the tyres for a puncher, uh, but again, there's a couple of advisors on tyres on there, so we'll give the customer an option. Does he want to look at the tyre replacement as the advisor on the MOT, or does he want to go ahead and just look to, look to see if we can fix the puncher for him? Um, that one's been MOT, so that we need to speak to the customer on that one this afternoon. Um, BMW X3 M40i, uh, this one was in last week for um, a brake noise and a brake judder. Um, Callum looked at it last week. We did a brake roller test on it. Also, we you do a run out um, and confirmed that the discs were warped on the back. Um, so the customer, we ordered the parts in uh, from BMW. Customers brought it back a day. The repair work's now done. Car's been road tested, fault sorted, so that's, that's good news. Um, we're just waiting for the company that, they bought, that he bought it off to, uh, to pay for that. And then again, we'll release it to the customer, get it back to get about the customer this afternoon so that one that one's good to go um that's just a staff member of car uh, member of staff's car put my teeth in um 
Modern Milkman, that one there, again, that came into us last week. We've just been waiting for authorization, which I got this morning. Um, again, I spoke to the, the, the company about that one this morning when I spoke to them about the engine one. Um, this one is uh, two front tires, one some brakes done on it. Uh, there's a problem with the door handle. Um, also, as well as that, um, it wants the handbrake looking at. Um, so all the parts are ordered for this now. Uh, I think we're waiting for the door handle to come from Fiat, which will probably be tomorrow or Wednesday. I think they said to 24 to 48 hours delivery time. Um, and that's in the diary for it to be done, middle of the week. Again, we'll get that back to the modern milkman and get that sorted. Um, run of the mill stuff, really, tyres, brakes. Um, obviously, with what these do, it stops, starts, so they can be a little bit heavier, heavier on brakes and tyres, just, just by the nature of how they're driven. Um, but like I say, that, that one's authorised now. It's a matter of getting it back through the workshop and, and getting that one fixed. Um, BMW, this one had a coolant leak. Um, we replaced a, a plastic housing um, and a couple of seals. That was done again over the weekend. Um, it's, it's ready to go back to the customer. Um, customer has been informed. He'll pick that up later on this afternoon. I think Mo's got a, a, his Mercedes to come back as well once this one's done. So we'll, uh, we'll swap them over for him later on this afternoon. That, that one's all good to go. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's ongoing. That we talk about a lot. Um, Range Rover Sport, yeah, Range Rover Sport. So this one uh, was brought to us by uh, a customer. It had a, a blow from the crossover pipe. Um, on these, again, sorry if, if you don't already know, V6, um, you have a crossover pipe, which which um, the, the crack, um, either the, the, the crack or the brackets work loose, or, or people do um, repair work on them, and they, they don't put the bracket back on, course that causes vibrations so to do that on these it's had to have the body off so the body's been off we've put the pipe on it body's back on it now um it's been test driven but again i think i've said before when we, we do jobs of this size and nature you know we always like to put a lot of miles on them um you know 30 40 miles just to make sure that it's it's right before it goes back there's a lot of work goes into taking these bodies off and on um, so before this goes back, it'll probably get 30, 40 miles test driven and make sure there's no worn lights on. We'll do fluid checks, etc. cetera, um, make sure, and then that'll be go back. But, um, but it is back together. Yeah, just, just the, the, the final throws up now, road tests, etc. cetera. Um, and that is pretty much it for today. So like I say, sorry you've had to put up with me again. Um, uh, um, but um, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, Welcome Gary. to. Oh, well, good afternoon. Afternoon, Andy. How's things? Good afternoon, Gary. Uh, I think we're on episode 35 now. It's Tuesday. Um, Marv's away for a few days, so unfortunately, got to put up with me. Um, so, busy doing the workshop for a change. Well, not for a change, as usual. Okay, let's start. Uh, we'll come over there. Ed. Um, March, although we know we've got new registrations, uh, but still it's historically it's still a pretty busy month for MOTs. Um, suffice to say, this is a little fiesta I got MOT this morning. Um, good regular customer, I've done a bit of work on this one. Uh, it's had a coil spring on, a uh, track on, and a drop link, and it's just about to be tested. Um, it's been serviced as well. Um, come, we see that one, I think this is probably the the third year we've seen this one now, uh, it's a good customer, that, that one needs to go back in the MOT, uh, get retested, and that one will be ready to go back to the customer once the inbox is done. Um, this Mavano, yeah, one Mavano, uh, just waiting for parts with this one, I think Marvin has probably spoke about this one a little bit last week, a um, little bit of a, a problem with this one, so you need to get parts for us, that, that's pretty much the new hold up, um, there's some starting to already arrive, um, which is the dual mass flywheel and the clutch on the floor there. Um, you probably notice, I, I don't know if Marv mentions them, but um, we use uh, LUK clutches a lot. Um, good, very, very good quality clutches, um, along with the, with the parts that we use. Uh, because with that, you know, we've got the confidence that it's a good quality part. The parts that we fit, we have decent warranties with, etc. Um, so yeah, LUK clutch and a, and a Saxa uh, bearing there, and you go back into that uh, when we receive the, the rest of the parts. Um, as I say, the MOT lifts free at the moment because um, Andy's just about ready to go back on there and retest that one because had the repairs done. Um, yeah, next van. Uh, typically, uh, this one here is getting us in for MOT. Um, do I mean, vans work hard, especially the next vans, the, these, these parcel delivery ones. 
Uh, but again, this one needs a couple of trap ends on, uh, and it's also got a drop link away. So, waiting for pots for that one. I think they're probably on the shelf now. Uh, Chris has probably dropped them off. So, that one's back in the schedule for this afternoon, um, and that'll be getting done, and then we'll deliver back the back the nips. Keep him on the road and delivering parcels, getting, uh, get, getting people their parcels. Um, this one here, you might have seen on a couple of videos last week or the week before. Um, it was originally in for, uh, it had no drive, so we replaced the offside drive shaft on it. Um, unfortunately, it's, um, it's, it's done the same again for some reason. So, um, what looked relatively like a, an easy drive shaft replacement, it's turned out that there's something else on it because the, the drive shaft um, failed again. So, we've got the back off the customer, picked that up uh, yesterday, I think it was. Um, so, that one there is going on the ramp this afternoon. Once Mike has finished doing the, the one that he's on with now, we'll have another look and see what's causing it because, you know, drive shafts, it, it shouldn't really go again unless one look unlucky and sits a faulty pot, which sometimes does happen. However, um, there may be something else on that, so we need to spend a bit more time just investigating what's going on with that and see, um, see what the problem is with it, see if it's see something else on the van. Uh, this one came in yesterday. Again, another van. I think we've pretty, we all got pretty much the game here as vans. So this one, um, a, a, another good customer on the Team Valley. Um, it, it failed yesterday or, or, um, when it had the service. We, we had brakes on the metal and also the offside front coil spring was snap. So Michael's just in the process of putting the spring back in now. The back brakes are already done on it. Uh, they're done and ready to go back together. Um, and then Michael's just putting the, putting the spring back in, that'll be finished soon. It's a shame we didn't do this yesterday because um, Michael had uh, a t shirt and I think he was in the tightest t shirt going competition yesterday. Uh, it was about four sizes too small. He looked, he looked good, mate. Looked good, mate. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, um, again, Michael's just putting the, the, the strut back in there. Um, as I said over there, this one's a sack strut. Uh, we, we believe in fitting quality parts, um, LUK parts, sax parts, very, very good quality. Um, and that's how we can give the, the warranties and, and the confidence to the customer that the, the car or the van's going to be right. Um, so that, that, one's, uh, that one's getting the strut fitting back in. Help me. Okay. Come on. Nice call this. Um, BMW 330E. Um, it's the new G shape. Um, I was looking to sell these a couple of years ago. Um, That was, uh, yeah, he's, he's, I think he's doing that on purpose. Sorry, guys. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, I was looking at his use a couple of years ago. 330E, um, again, another Team Valley customer, um, Team Valley company. Uh, regular service, routine service, this one. It's its first one it's getting. Um, so we'll get this serviced. Um, and again, back to the customer. Uh, it's a, it hasn't been started yet. It's ready to be started uh, once Colm's finished uh, his, his job. Uh, that one will be next, next for coming. Um, this one here, uh, Parker Tales around the corner, a kid another Team Valley customer. Great. Um, it's, it's had quite a bit of work done um, uh, at the previous garage that used to look after it. So, um, unfortunately, whether it be off the back of that or it's, it's hard to say. Um, but this one's had a bit of a problem. We've, we've tried the, um, it keeps on uh, going into limp mode uh, and keep on a uh, lack of power. Uh, we try to uh, do various different things, um, but what it entails is that we've ended up having to replace the turbocharger on it. Uh, the turbocharger uh, was, was keep on under boosting. Uh, it kept on coming with the same code. We tried uh, software updates, you know, uh, raising the faults. Um, you know, uh, we did a, a DPF regeneration on it. Uh, it just didn't work, so we've eventually had to, you know, bite the bullet, I suppose, or the customer has, sorry, should I say, whereby we've, uh, we're getting the turbocharger on that. The turbochargers fitted, yeah, uh, are just about to go back on. It's it's all stripped off. Put the turbocharger back on it, um, build it back up, and then uh, then hopefully that that should, that should sort that one. Um, bit of work to do on these. Like most um, uh, front wheel drive diesels, um, it's it's down the front of the engine there. Um, they're just awkward. They're awkward to do, you know. They, they take a bit of time to, to get into and in, in change. Um, but yeah, that's 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 going back together as we speak. So hopefully that that one that that, that should sort that and, and get it back to the customer and keep it keep it going reliably for. Uh, so 
that's the um, that's the, the, the diesel portable filter, um, which is lying on the floor there. Obviously, you've got to take that off when you're putting the turbo charger on. Um, put the new unit on, then, then that'll go back on. Um, G Wagon, Cracky, as you've probably noticed, it's, it's the other way around today. Um, I'm not going to talk a great deal about that one because I know Marvin speaks about that one a lot. But as you can see, um, it moves, it's turned around, it's, um, it's, it's the other way. Um, I'll, I'll let Marvin talk about that when he comes back because. There's a lot, a lot of work on the, into the jib, got into jib. Um, it'll suffice to say that he'll, uh, he'll catch up and he'll give you an update on that one when he, when he comes back with us. Okay, all right. um, and that's pretty much it for today. Um, not going to bother going to the car park because you can see that the weather's not very nice today in the northeast, unfortunately. Um, but uh, thank you for watching and hopefully we might see you tomorrow. Thanks very much. Oh my God, Gary's. Yes, I know, it's uh, because, well, I think it's what's happened is that the RAC Patron that drives this must have a huge bottom because the seat cushion's collapsed. Ah! Oh. Yeah, that's it. Well, it must have collapsed his as well, yeah, down like 400 miles. Mm. Yeah, and uh, it's got a noise on it. I hope it's fine. Sorry, I was going to swear there. Uh, nearly did. Yeah. You remind me of that TV programme, On The Move. Have you remember it? On The Move? No. On The Move. It was a, a programme that used to... I used to teach people reading and writing. Bob Hoskins, he was in. Bob Hoskins? He used to pull up on our thing. Was that the first oh, one? Oh, on the move, on the move, we're on our way again. Gary's only 21 plus the back. Yeah, oh. that's a lot of that. That's a lot of that. I'll tell you what I'm trying to do, I'm shame Bob. Have a slash? No, no, I'm shame Bob standing there, otherwise he would have been soaked by now. Oh, you do know the slash? Oh, actually you'll know. There's another thing. There's another thing. RAC patrolman looking after his vehicle, I can see. Hasn't got no um, hasn't got no water on his washers. That's oh, a disgrace. That's, that's terrible. Terrible. Right, see you later, Gareth. Okay, okay James. Excuse me, sir, what do you think Hi. of Polo Mint? How are you doing? What do you Very think good with the hole. <laughs> Ellen, yes, we finally come across this rare wildebeest type that's known as Marvin Campbell. Hello, and Here welcome we to this today's episode. It is rare to see me this week, because I'm not actually are. supposed to be working this week. I'm off this week. Here that's we are why. in the lesser reaches of Team Valley, Gateshead, looking for all the wildlife that may not have been exposed to normal society. I shouldn't be allowed in society. <laughs> that's, that's, I'll do that one more. There's Gary just trying to wreck the RAC van. I'm just seeing Gary doing a 47 point turn. Well, actually, it is near MOT bit, that's where Gary does his rollies. Will Gary get it on the ramp? Will Gary yeah. crash the van? Way! Right, so we may as well start off. Episode with... 10 billion. Well, I don't know, I never started it. Gary's. Gary's 35, it, I think. This is Gary's week of episode 30. 35, I think. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Gary's on a driving lesson. Right, I just had a double, I had a double check. You ready, Jim? It was. This is episode thirty-five. Woo! Um, so Gary just pulled that. Hey, go! There's Happy Andy. There was. There's Happy Andy. He's always happy to be on camera. That's why he just walks straight out in a huff. The face of Place Capstan cigarettes. If you ever see that man smiling, then we will give away one hundred pounds. Because that will never happen. Gary's just put that RAC van on there for a health check, and it's got um, a couple of faults. It's got our blue fault, and it's also slightly overdue a service. Similar van here, actually. We've both got the lift up tailgate. That doesn't work. Um, this is in for getting coilovers all round, just to lower it a little bit because. The new size wheels on, it's a little bit of a big arch cap there, so I'm going to try and drop it down a little bit so maybe it's got uh, 25 30 mil of arch cap and make that van sit a lot nicer. It's also getting the can phantom, so remember if you've got a well, if you've got a car that you want to keep, really, uh, most cars now are a target of theft. If you want to try and keep it, then fit the can phantom and you'll keep your car. If you give Gary on the front or Jimmy a call, he will make sure he sorts out a good deal. This um, Vito van, this is a shotgun, a couple of other bits and bobs. Uh, it's had it all 
done, but obviously because it's had suspension work, it's now going to get the four wheel lemon done to make sure that is running nice and straight. This fan here has just had the gearbox out, that's why it's so framed on the floor. So, the gearbox has been out, the clutch was ruined. Um, gearbox is back in. I can see straight away that that exhaust flexi needs a little bit of work on it. So, once that's all back together, we'll obviously do a little bit of work on that flexi. I'll put new flexi in and that'll go back to the customer. What was wrong with the gearbox? Oh, big yawn, that's what was wrong with it. Um, nothing, it was just the clutch was gone, but you've got to take the gearbox out because the clutch plate is basically in there, which is the bell I was in, that's in between the engine and the gearbox. That's where you clutch it. I hope we're using the audio off this thing because Marvin forgot to turn his microphone on. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. Is the audio on now? Audio's. We're live on fire. We're cooking on gas. Um, He's the smax head. The smax is in for an ABS sensor. I was in for a dialing this morning. Callum got it down to the ABS sensor. And there's a genuine one on the bonnet there ready to go. Quite a nice looking car, really. They're a really good car, I'm pretty sure. If I remember rightly, um, I think this is the one I've had it in before, and it was actually four wheel drive. So it's seven seater, four wheel drive. I bet it's an awesome car, but I bet it was an absolute, and it's automatic, so I bet it was an absolute fortune to buy that car. But it would be a really good all round car that I yeah. think to drive. Nice looking car. Um, this is the Eco Ford Eco Sport. It's in for MOT this one, it absolutely flew through, cars like a brand new car. It's only got 9,000 mile on, it's mint condition. Nice looking car too. It is a cool little car. These look like they are four wheel drive, but they're not, these are two wheel drive. Uh, and that one looks like two wheel drive, but it is four wheel drive, so cars just switched up a bit there for you. This is the Eco Boost engine, so we're not a fan of the Eco Boost because it seems to be Eco Boom. But for 9,000 mile on, hopefully this one will still be perfect condition. This is getting a full service including the spark plugs. Does this belong to Ernie? Ernie! Ernie! And he drove the fastest milk cart in the West. <laughs> Jimmy's <needs> his own show. <laughs> um, milk float is in. To be honest I don't know what this milk float's in for. Because we see that many of them. And they've all got very similar regs, but I'm sure it's in for a lot of things because. Is it a Fiat ski? It's a Fiat. I'm sure this one is a Fiat. Yeah, it's a Doblo. Um, so Doblo sort of cab chassis, then they get these backs put on. They've got the, they put reverse cameras on, sensors and everything, and they still manage to drive it at the back of So, Jim Well, Wagon. it's a cool kit. Look, I didn't even say so there. Yeah. Cool kit. So the G-Wagon was going very, very, very well. Even so well that the other day, I took it out for a drive, running really nice. Um, it looks a lot nicer because we've done all the um, side steps give it a quick wash. It still needs to get some paint work done at the body shop and a little bit of work on the interior. It's actually pointing you the way as well. That's the progress, it's actually, it's done a full, <laughs> a full 180. Um, I had it on the MOT left for the day, I had a bit of a boo-boo, I'll show you what that is. Um, it was my fault, but I've just created a little bit of extra work for yourself. This is the second gear tied landmark after the Angel of the North. So, basically what that was, um, I put it on the four coach ramp, I done this side step after pulling the other one. I then cleaned the full interior down, put all the door cards on, pretty much got everything done. And then I started it up and the car was in reverse and then shot off, backwards, off oh. the ramp. And I left that door open, so now this door goes pretty much all the way around. Wow, that's a suicide door! Yeah, so I had a bit of a boo-boo there and I managed to obliterate that door hinge. Um, and also, that's the, the door hinge. There's a check strap there. That's supposed to be attached to the there. Marvin, I won't tell anybody if you don't. Mm. Well, and then this handle took a bit of a beating because I tried to grab this handle and stop the car. I don't think this was made to stop the car. So I have to do a couple of little bit extra repairs on that. But as you can see, <laughs> But well, you can see everything now because it's so easy you can get into the door opens that way. Oh, wide. beautiful. Yeah, this has been there. Uh, I think something's been living in here, but we'll get that repaired. But the rest of the trims. Love the centre console. Pretty clean. Very. Believe it or not, that is genuine wood. 
1980s hi-fi. Yep. You've still got it, Jim. I have, that's true. Actually, <laughs> 70s. <laughs> so, unfortunately, the door doesn't close very well now. Doesn't close the door now. Mm. Yeah. Can't say, really say much. So. Oh. Bit of cut on there, that'd be alright, won't it? Aye, not so much tea cut, I don't think. Bit of gaffer tape on the door, job's good. Um, but the rest of it's pretty much ready to go. You see, all the back door cards are on now. Back actually, seats are all fit and perfect. It is place. a really nice interior, I mean, it's massive. There's a lot of room in the back of a G Wagon, actually, a lot more than I thought. Um, but to be fair, everything works now. We've got the electric windows in the back, they work perfect. Separate lock on every door. Um, I'm just going to sit in the back, Mark. Full see what it's like. There's a. Jim will get in the back there with his sitting experience. His court suit on. Wow, armchairs. Well, there's more room in there than there is in the Defender. Wow, it is really comfy. It feels a bit like sitting in a bush shelter. That's about the best description. That's got me more comfortable than a bush shelter. The seats are really comfy. Yeah. Really, really comfy. The dash. Let me just show everyone the dash. It's it's from another era. Let's just say that. Wow. This literally is worlds apart. Check that out. But this interior is really good. Well, for a car this year, I think it's a 1980 on a G, I think it is, or whatever it, the reg is, but it's got front, centre, and rear ah. diff lock. Something of this age would be, if you got a Defender this age, it would be, well, you'd probably be picking your car up in a bag, I think it would be that rotten. It's beautiful inside, seriously. I should give that back to you, Marvin, while yes. I Yes, come on, James, you dismount from the old G Wagon. Wow. Easier said than done. Two. And then someone's actually added in the back of this car. They've added another shelf for some reason. Wow, flying saucer! That's the old uh, veal cover. This is just a box full of spares. Um, this is the air filter cover, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's the cover for Jim's wallet. Hey! Just there. Uh, that's, that's the size of your Rolex watch. So they take the moon. So. We lost the lights actually for the number plate, so we changed these to LED, and we did have LED units for here, but we couldn't find them, so we've literally just put them on Paul's box, ready to um, ready to get done. Oh, where's Gary going with this? Gary, hello, Marvin. Where are you going with this? Well, what's happened is there's a bit of a bit of a bit of a problem because that vehicle there is that low. It's a low rider. Oh, so no, right. Turn that ramp. So we're going to just do a little bit of shuffling. This one will go there, and that one will go here. Okay. Mm. And then uh, I think that'll be absolutely splendid, don't you? Mm. Gary, marks out a ten for a deer. Uh, for just for all round garageness. All round garageness. Um, challenge there, a lot on the go, uh, but we've got through it. I think um, a solid eight. Oh. Whew. That's a good day, guys. It's solid eight. That's a good day. It is, considering, have, what, considering what was in the car park this morning and where we're at now. Do we have more money in the bank than we had this one this morning when we started? Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> however... That's how that's however, a funny way to measure the however, day. However, um, you know, there's time yet. No, don't worry, don't... Look, at it. all we worry about is the end of the day. Customer that's satisfaction. End of the day, customer satisfaction. Job's done right. Everybody get the cars and the van's back. Ready to go. Boom. Yeah. I'm trying to be serious, but Jim's actually looking at us and just his face is not for me. How can Jim be serious? Oh, Marvin, like that. Marvin. Did, um, <laughs> you can talk to Gary about the other two out of ten did later you, on. Did you hear that um, Jim's been for an interview the other day at McDonald's? Um, Jim's got the manager's job. Yeah. Car park manager. Yeah. What would you like for lunch tomorrow? I want a what's, what's, what's I want a McValley. What, what's on the menu? McValley. McValley. Breathe. So. Under this abundance of tape, most kind. Um, I don't think you can see much. To be honest with you. Is this where you keep all the fifties? But this, uh, this is a second-hand, a second-hand engine for the black Range Rover. So after all the investigation oh, wow. we did, basically it was low on compression on one cylinder. Um, oh. Went through basically what that meant with the customer. So it wasn't firing properly on one cylinder. It was, I think, 120 psi down, which is a lot. Um, you know, if you've seen something within 10%, you would 
could probably make something work but unfortunately that much it wasn't so we then looked further it was in the bottom end so then we'll just ask the customer to replace um or find a replacement so we would normally we would normally want you to buy a brand new one from land rover we would supply it fit it but the bill will be getting up to between 50 and 20 thousand pounds that car wasn't worth it so on this occasion uh, he's a good customer we've actually let him source his own second hand engine we'll remove the body put that engine in for him and hopefully he has many more miles of is this the three litre v6 this is the three litre v6 jimmy right so how difficult is it now to get hold of those engines um if you want a brand new one i can get you a three litre v6 tomorrow if you want a second hand one they're getting a lot more hard to come by because obviously these cars are getting a lot more miles on them this is the same engine basically that was used in for Jag. For Jaguar Land Rover, I have to say, this has probably been used since 2009. So this took over from the 2.7, now it came to the 3 litre. Um, and we're still using this 3 litre. It's changed slightly, but I wouldn't say it's changed that much for the better. But they are still using this 3 litre in the Disco 5. And what else are they using this in? I think now it's probably the Disco 5. Of the, the newest models because they changed it to a BMW platform, yeah, have, yeah. so they changed it to a 4.4 V8 um, and also a straight six. So they do it in Genium. I'm sure it's a straight six in Genium now they'll use rather than this. Um, I love this engine. It's definitely got a major flaw on the crankshaft. If you Google that, you would find out it was obviously there's a lot of problems with that. But it's powerful. It's fairly economical. It's quiet. Ah, it's quiet. It's smooth. Pulls the car really well, but one day you know that the car's definitely going to snap the crank. Um, this one lost compression, or the one that's outside did, so this will get the body off, get that engine put in, and we'll scrap that other engine. Has anyone asked at any time to put a 3.5 litre V8 diesel in? Because that's becoming more popular because these engines are getting harder to get hold of. It is, aye. So there's a, we have seen the, the 3.6 TD V8 put in a disco. Um, Disco 3 and Disco 4 but the more popular conversion now is the 3 litre BMW engine um, using the 8 HP 8 speed box going into a uh, going into Defender, Discovery, um, Rainbow Sport, we've seen that Trans Advanced, seen that engine go into anything good engine, reliable, plenty of power and a fairly easy conversion if you know what you're doing. If anybody has put a 3.6 TDV engine in We'd be interested to hear from you. We would and would like to drive it. Yeah, definitely. I've never drove one. Um, I do have a 3.6 TDV Range Rover. I know that drives great. I like it. Jim likes it. Sounds um, beautiful. Makes all right noises. It's never given us any hassle. Cars, you know, it's been well serviced, so I suppose it shouldn't give us that much hassle. Um, but to put an engine in Discovery, that would be a really good car. Andrew, what's going on here, sir? Put a turbo in here. Just a moment to see a little start. Andrew's absolutely sick. This is the this light, is, the blue touch paper moment. Yeah, this job is just a job that not many garages will take on. Just a bit of a headache to be with it. If you look from there, obviously you can't even see the turbo there. And when you look from underneath, you can barely see the turbo there either. Um, Has this been an engine out job or? No, managed to do it all in situ, but every single bolt has fought us all the way. You know what I mean? the old unit there? There's a lot of oil in that inlet pipe there, you can see there. So, basically excess oil consumption is what that had. That's a Borg Warner genuine unit. Um, obviously the old one, and we fitted it with exactly the same thing. Used a Borg Warner genuine. Oh, it's running. It's running, purring like an absolute dream. No, Andrew, there's no puddles, and it sounds like it's running on all four cylinders. Another fine job by Andrew. Yep. That battery's massive. That's a proper Japanese battery, that. Mm. Um, so what's a crack with a van like? So this van here is pretty much a write-off now. What? What? Jim says, what? It looks white and shiny. It is white and shiny and it is a 65 plate. 
So this is the van I came in for. Um, basically, clutch pedal was sinking on the floor. There's a couple of noise on the engine. Basically, what's happened is there's too much sideways thrust on the crankshaft. Um, that was giving you problems selecting gear. So what was that was when you put your foot in the clutch, it was actually pushing the full crankshaft as well as the flywheel wow. um, towards the driver's side, which is not what you want. And then basically it was coming back and it was giving you all sorts of problems and rattles. So uh, engine is gone and clutch and flywheel needs replacing, but the gearbox look is all right. So the customers declined the job. Um, we're probably just going to put this van back together and this will be sold, probably spares or repairs, somebody else will buy it. Um, is it at least legal or private owned? No, it's a, it's a company owned vehicle, but they own it outright. I think they've owned it probably since nearly new. So, they, you know, they've, they've had the use out of it and obviously I'm sure they've, uh, they've had many happy miles in it, but unfortunately the miles that they're on now, um, it's done quite a few miles, but I don't think it's over 100k yet, which is strange on this year of van because they're normally very reliable do a lot of clutches, a lot of flywheels, a lot of turbos, but normally the engine's all right. Um, I'll see what Michael's on doing. Hang on. It's always work, mate. That's a turbo. I've done a turbo's work. That should be working for a proper garage, mate. That's what I mean, cop machine, mate. Boom. So this came in with the add blue lights and um, the DPF full warning, I right. suppose. So the two of them probably been counteract each other, so he's Top of that blue, put it at the right level, um, and then do a DPF regen. Seems to have worked perfectly. All we need now is this car get health checks, make sure it's good to go, um, make sure everything's all safe, just check brakes, suspension, blah 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 blah. Once that's done, that'll go back to the customer, and Mike will be on with his next job. Boom! Boom! Which one's that? I've got the phone. Right, let's have a quick look outside because I'm. Um, not even at work this week, I'm supposed to be, well, I'm supposed to be at home doing bits of gerbs. So I'm not. Walk a little bit faster so I can get the swagger in, Marvin. <laughs> no bit. Right, we've had a bit of a camera issue. I think we've fixed it. Maybe. It's a little bit dark. A little bit dark. Anyway. Um, right, so this Merc, we recovered it in. Um, airbag fault. The customer could have drove it to be honest with you, but he, you didn't want to drive it with the airbag fault on just in case of an accident so this is in for i believe it's a passenger side uh, seat pad um this range rover this came in literally on the bottom so this had a new compressor really common fit the compressor and we've done the height calibration this car has been with us a while we're waiting for authorization this little suzuki for the warranty company then this trans van needs a gearbox rebuild. It's in booked in for tomorrow. Lots of vans and gearboxes, isn't it? Lots of vans. You okay? All good? Aye. The, there's a bit of a leak on the you know, the back of the compressor. Aye. It sounds like it's coming out. There's like a little looks like a little intercooler Aye. on the back. It sounds like it's coming out there, but constant. Just even I just turned the compressor off for the emergency stop. It constantly seems to be coming out of the box. And you can see the, the pressure's coming down all the time. That's Not... That's the control area for the suction box probably. Let's have a look. And, the, and also, if you can just check the full line. Aye. Because it obviously, Definitely. because it gets moved. Now when they're pulling the airlines, everything, just all the joints want. Right. Just nipping up. Right. Um, for that, we, we had a special tool for the fitting. Yeah. To go over. I mean, normally I can just, like, roll Aye, on. Is it, is it doable like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can just do it with your hand. Aye. Aye. You can try. Yo. It's alright, go on. I'm stuck. Can I show you something? Of course yeah. you can. Sorry. Don't okay. worry. Can you just give me the new van? van. Yeah. Um, I'm carrying. I'm waiting for the chance, sorry. I'm carrying compressors on the side, and there's no point in here where I can strap the compressor, and I thought I'm going to take them off. Yeah. And just bolt them in there, but I haven't got a tool to go in. Do you, do you want the tool? That. Yeah, yeah, of course. I don't problem. But I'll get you one. Right? Yeah, yeah. I will just, I'll take maybe three, four in here and I'll give it back to you. No problem. Sorry? Yeah, man. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Um, right, so. Suzuki, did we discuss that? That's not a Suzuki. 
that's a Suzuki. Seat, sorry. This is Seat. Uh, this was in for just the top mounts. Had a little squeak when you went over a bump, so we've just stripped them, greased them, put them back together. Hopefully, that'll keep that good. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you what this is for. And I also don't know what that's for, to be honest with you, because I'm not in. I'm it's a little bit. Holiday. I know, I'm a little it's bit rusty. This one here is in. F uh, I'm lying. This is our courtesy car. That's how much I know. This Range Rover is the one that we had in last week. That was all done. It's diesel, isn't it? But it is a diesel, three litre diesel. This is the BM motor. The engine that I was talking about that gets retrofitted in a lot of cars. Um, it's still not running perfect, so we've got rid of all the horrendous smoke, but I still think it needs another injector. Um, it's somebody I know this car, but to be fair, I would normally just suggest just putting six injectors in and be done with it. And this is the car that's getting the engine. So this is the 2012 Range Rover Sport, well, three litre. Well, I know there's Range Rovers everywhere. This one belongs to Doctor Who. This one here is the 4.2 supercharged. Very rare the engines go wrong, but unfortunately these were used in the earlier Range Rover. So obviously because it's an early Range Rover, reliability, bleh, reliability issues even. Um, are starting to sort of succumb to these cars so this now has got a gearbox problem I think it's got a problem with the suspension a problem with the steering just because these cars are getting on now um, keeping them on I uh, keeping them on the road is starting to get rather expensive same as this you know this car um, when he bought this car it was um, it was a magnet really and it was, it's been uber reliable. It's been unbelievable. I think the car is a 2004, I believe. Um, this car was purchased from Pinewood Studios, believe it or not. Um, the man who had it was a stunt man, but obviously I don't think he used his car for any stunts. It's his own personal car. It's been unbelievable. Very, very, very little work ever done in this car. It's never needed anything. Um, but because they're getting older a bit now, Obviously, they started needing a little bit more TLC. Age, it is showing its age a little bit now, which it's is. It's a lovely car. It is still drives mint. Um, it's probably one of the most comfortable interiors you'll get in a Range Rover. Um, it's just bits of lack of peel and stuff like that, but I'm sure that all gets sorted anyway. He'll not, uh, he'll not let it get too bad. How nice to be surrounded by Land Rover. Mm, well, if you like that sort of thing. Well, sport about that one, the compressor, that one's all done, ready to go. In total of compressors, we have got a fault with our compressor. Um, I was going to say in the northeast, I'm pretty sure these do pretty much up and down the country. If you need anything to do with your compressor, any sort of airlines fitting, um, screw compressors, anything, give them a call. They've been unbelievable with us. We've always used them. Um, and I only rang them yesterday and they got somebody out this morning to do that for us. So. What about this huge Mercedes? This Mercedes is, well, basically it's exactly the same as a Nissan Navara with a Merc badge on. Um, this is in for a knock sensor. Because this is like a crossover vehicle between the two manufacturers, it's really hard to get parts for. So they've basically, as soon as we asked them for a knock sensor, that sensor's gone straight out on the back order. And we've been, well, we're just putting the dark really. Uh, this is in for, I believe, an MOT, but in this Audi A4. But it does need some extra work before it gets tested. No idea, Jim. That is there. Somebody put in the questions. Tell us how. I think we've got the Daimler, Daimler, and the Mercedes Benz came because the car was called Mercedes after one of the guy's daughters. Oh. Maybe somebody can. Somebody can clarify that for us. That'll be yeah, good. That'll be appreciated. Uh, big Magnum just sitting there while I'm, um, well, getting some stuff done at home. So I didn't really want it on the driveway and neither the neighbours. And then one day we will definitely, definitely get back on that IVO and get that fixed for Jason. Um, Statham. Jason Statham, yeah. He needs it for the, uh, his next movie. The Transporter. Transporter Lake. What about that fee? That there? Has anyone won that one yet? No, that was that fee was given to me by my friend. So that car will never be given away or sold. Um, cool little car, but I think it's, it's beyond roadworthiness. We did get it running and I got it to drive down the street and I ended up nearly having a heart attack because I had to push it back up here. Luckily it's extremely light. Um, I don't know whether I'll be in tomorrow. You might be with Gary. You might prefer Gary to be honest with you. I think a lot of people do. 
Uh, so either be Jim behind the camera or it'll be Eddie B. And I'm not even sure. I don't know who's going to be on the camera. I don't know who this guy is on the camera. But it'll be either me or Gary on this side or Jim or Ed on the other side. But whoever it is, hopefully we see it tomorrow and that should be Thursday. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it is Thursday afternoon. Uh, it's uh, crazy, 20 past five. Don't know where the day has gone. Um, first of all, I want to apologise because uh, you notice on, you'll probably notice on the video, um, Monday and Tuesday was very, very similar. Um, so I do apologise about that, but I was nervous on Monday and Tuesday, so hopefully the day will be better. Um, just trying to fill in for Marv, because uh, obviously he's got a lot on his plate this, this, this week, been very, very busy. Um, so the, the workshop's pretty empty at the minute because um, I'll show you every, everything's pretty much been through. I had a really good day today. Um, a lot of stuff's gone through the workshop. A lot of stuff's ready to go back to customs now, as it is at half past five. Um, so finishing off the day, getting ready to set up for tomorrow. Okay. So what have we got? Um, this um, this is a, a good friend of, of Marvin's, very, very good customer. Um, this one's been in, as you can see, uh, we've fitted um, front and rear suspension to it. It's got the coilovers on now. Um, customers asked that it's been lowered by approximately 60 millimeters uh, with what it is. Um, I think it's changed the van dr dr drastically. I mean, me personally, I think that looks very, very good. Nice looking van. I think this is Paul's second or third one he's had now. Um, but like I say, if you saw it before, you would see what the difference is. Um, Callum's put the kit on it today. Um, transformed the van, as I say, a very, I think it's a good height. Um, we've got probably about 20 mil from the, from the wheel arches. Uh, to the wheels, uh, we've set it like that. We've always got the option, whether it be in the coilovers and adjustables, we can, if need be, adjust what the customer wants. Um, we've set it really just for a little bit of an aesthetic look, but also a little bit of comfort as well. Because um, obviously what we've got to take into account is that if we were to put it too low, if he puts any weight in the van, uh, the family, etc., what could happen is it, it, might, it might be right on the bump stops. However, um, that's the base, base set there, ready to go. Uh, like I say, I think that looks, I mean, personally, I think that looks lovely, very, very nice. Very, very nice. Um, oh, hello, Michael. Hello there. Uh, this is uh, this is Michael. Michael is it Michael Thomas yes. O'Hanlon Smith? Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Um, Michael's very, very posh when he wants to be. Uh, so uh, St John's ambulance. This one is in the process. Michael's going to have the gearbox out, possibly tonight. Yeah. No, not be out tonight. Um, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit of a job getting the gearbox out. Uh, we do a few of these, I think you might have saw in, a, in an episode, was it last week, um, van that was over there. Um, Peugeot, Citroen, very, very similar gearbox and uh, running gear on them. This one here is suffering from stiff gear selection. Uh, also, it's also got some noises on it as well. With it being the ambulance, it's probably done, I think this one's done about 140,000 miles now. Uh, they do tend to suffer from a little bit of gearbox problems in that. Um, the, the bearings fail on them, the bearings collapse on them, uh, it's the idler as well, but mix top notch, I mean when it comes to gearboxes, I pee pretty much, I think you, you saw it on last week, you know, he's like, and it goes back together and it goes back together well, so we'll have that out probably tomorrow, uh, the gearbox kits, we've, the, the bearings for them are very, very similar, so we've already ordered the bearing kit in for it, so with a bit of luck we'll get a decent run tomorrow. Michael might even have that one back together on its wheels up and running. Um, if not, it'll be Monday at the latest. Yeah, Monday at the latest. But um, yeah, yeah, we do do a few of them. I think that's. I've been here what just over a year and a half now. I think that's probably the third or fourth one we've done. Um, just one of the one of the little common things that they suffer from. Um, this one is the milk float uh, again. Uh, a couple of front tyres. It needs the front brake work done. Uh, there's the door door handle to fit to it as well. Um, needs a little bit of repair on the handbrake. That's in process. We've done some of it. Callum is getting that in. Again, that's ready for tomorrow. Callum will be finishing that up for tomorrow and that'll go back to Modern Milkman. Uh, pretty relatively straightforward. Yeah, relatively straightforward. That one. A um, few parts ready to put on the shelf as well. What a lovely day in the northeast of England. Uh, what have we got in the car park? Uh, yes. Um, Jaguar. Uh, this one was originally booked in for uh, uh, a, a problem with the it, it, cutting out. Um, customers suspect that somebody else is looking at it, um, and they've said it's possible to do with the in inline fuel tank. Sorry, the inline pump in the tank. 
we'll diagnose it ourselves. We'll, we'll try not to follow other people's diagnosis unless people see it as we specifically replace the part as necessary. Um, just because obviously you're likely to be clear in your own mind that you're, you're replacing the right part. I think the, the, the reason for that is obviously what we want to be sure is that, you know, we're not doing work that we don't need to run the car or the van. And then obviously, you know, that's un, an unnecessary expense for the customer. Even if it takes a little bit longer to diagnose it, we'd rather be double, doubly sure just to, make, just, just to make sure that's okay. However, um, when it was on its way to us, it developed a problem with the offside front wheel. We've had to recover it this morning. Uh, it's been brought into us. Uh, we've sorted the wheel now, so the car's mobile, back on its back up and running. So we'll look at the original faults that it was booked in for. That's in the dairy for tomorrow. It'll be coming in tonight, and it'll get started tomorrow to be looked at for the uh, for the for the cut now problem. You know, with, with that one. Um, transit van again. Um, we spoke about this one the other day. Customers now authorised us for to work on it some more. The, the there's a problem in the gearbox. Um, so the gearbox needs to come out and be stripped. Uh, we'll strip the gearbox. Again, Michael uh, he's fairly confident that he'll, he'll hopefully be able to fix that. We were hoping that it can be fixed. The reason being is that the gearboxes for these are literally like the proverbial hen's teeth are in short supply. You can't get a hold of parts for Fords at the minute. They are, they are difficult. Some, for, some parts are difficult to hold of. So um, that one will come out. That's in the dairy for Monday. We've allocated uh, uh, half a day in the dairy for Monday to get the gearbox out of it, get it stripped, compile a list of parts, um, and confirm that the, the customers with the customers. But um, hopefully that, that'll, that'll fix. But however, by the time it's out, you know, costs will, uh, it, it needs to be fixed then. You know, you're into it then. Yeah, with that. Um, Range Rover. Uh, this one uh, is waiting for, we, we, sorry, it's not waiting for, we've ordered the shutter fix for it. Something that you suffer from a little bit, uh, this is the this is the 6 HP gearbox, um, is with the, the, the gear change can be uh, clunky, notchy, uh, can bang at the gear, uh, and it gives, a, it gives a shuddering sensation through the car. Um, Land Rover um, developed a fix for it, 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 it is literally called shutter fix. So there's some shutter fix to go into it, that'll go into it tonight. Um, and then that there, once the shutter fix is in, uh, we'll run up the temperature, recheck the gearbox oil level, test drive it, and then give it back to the customer. Then put a few miles on. You put miles on them to make sure before you then go any further. Because um, again, if that doesn't fix it, then we are into the depths of gearbox problems, gearbox fixes, etc., and things like that, which on these, again, can be relatively expensive and difficult because lack of availability of parts because of the, the edge of the car. Yeah, with that one. Um, I mentioned this one, uh, I think it was Monday or Tuesday. Um, cars still not quite right. Uh, we've already put one injector in it, um, but we need to have another look because it's it's still got a misfire on it. Uh, that was, So again, we'll do a leak off test, check the codes, see if it comes up with any, any more injectors on it. Uh, once we've got that, um, we'll then decide how many more injectors to put in it. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that one's to go back through. And the black one next to it, the engine's now here for that. Customers ordered an engine for it. That's we walk past it. You can't miss the, the great big crate in the corner. Uh, that's here for that now. Um, again, we just need to find some dairy and that to, to get the body back off it, and then get the engine uh, get the engine replaced on that one. Yeah, so that one. So the, all these are in process. Uh, it's just a matter of dotting the eyes and crossing the t's, finalising where we we'll go with them, and getting them finished back to the customers, of course. Um, Mercedes Benz Vito. This one needs a, a knock sensor. Um, another knock sensor, surprisingly enough. The sensor's on its way from it. It's even more surprising, actually, Mercedes have got one. Um, so that's all right. Uh, we've got it on the next van tomorrow morning. That'll be fitted tomorrow. Um, we'll fit the sensor. You then carry out a process where you raise the codes. You have to teach them into the vehicle as well. Important that when we replace knock sensors, um, I think a lot of people make a small mistake in that they, they, they don't, but you have to teach them in as part of it. Uh, learn, learn into the vehicle so the vehicle knows it's a new knock sensor. Um, and then raise the faults, test drive it, and uh, hopefully, all being well, that'll be back to the customer tomorrow. Uh, you see these video. Little Fiat Panda 100 LP. Uh, this one here uh, is needing a clutch in. Uh, the, the customer was de described as a whirring noise. The, the whirring noise is because the, the thrust bearing's collapsed, or the release bearing, whichever you want to call it. Uh, so that needs, that needs a clutch in. Uh, we're waiting for the, we've, we've quoted the customer a price, um, just waiting for them to come back to us and decide whether or not we want to go ahead with it. it 
again, the, the, the downside of this is that the price to put a clutch on this compared to the, the, the car, it's, it's touch and go whether it's economical or not. Um, however, you, you know, um, that, that's, that's, that's a clutch fault on that one. Um, clean up that, call that. I think that's similar to the one Gary, that is possibly that we're, we're giving away. This is, that, is, is right? one of the coolest cars yes. going. Yeah, okay, here he is. Yeah. Gary's just, I'm not supposed to be in, I'm not actually in. Of course. Yeah. Uh, Gary's just described this as 100 LP. I just, just top them there, it's actually 100 HP. Is it really? 100 horsepower, Gary. Uh, sorry, I couldn't read. <laughs> I've got the wrong glasses on. That looks Actually, like that it does look like LP. Ed, can you come in with the camera? Eddie, go uh, closer. In, 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 in my defence, right? In Eddie, fact, it looks like a hundred IP. So it does, doesn't it? This is a hundred TP. <laughs> it's a hundred something anyway. Well, the bill's more than hundred something. Uh, that's, the bill, thing. Uh, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. So this thing, well, this is exactly the same same model as the I don't know what year ours is, um, but this is the same pound a hundred horsepower that we're going to give away on ten thousand subscribers. So make sure you like, subscribe, share, all that sort of good stuff. Um, and we'll just pick it around. The same as we just give away £500 to All About Cars UK. He's got his £500. Um, and we'll drop you a little video in. Uh, he's just sent us a video thanking us for that £500. He says he's going to spend that on a, um, I think a holiday or something. He's going to put it towards a holiday. I don't think he much of a holiday with £500 quid these days. But he's going to put it towards us. He sent us a little video there just thanking us. So that's nice of him. Obviously, if you subscribe to us, He's obviously going to get you to subscribe to his page as well. So, and he says he's going to give away a car as well. So, that's good. Maybe if I subscribe to his page, I'll win a car back. <laughs> yeah. Hello, I'm Dale, and I've got the YouTube channel All About Cars UK. Now, last Sunday, I got a notification on my phone from Team Valley MOTs saying that I've won £500. I couldn't believe it. Obviously, the announcement was done the following week, and then my phone pinged up after you uploaded your video last Sunday. I was mentioned in the video and of course I looked at it I couldn't believe I won all about cars UK and I won the 500 pound thanks ever so much it will go to a good cause I think we're going to try and book a family holiday towards the end of the year um, in the meantime obviously my car all about cars UK I'm an independent uh, car dealer down here in the southeast so that's why I can't get up to, to meet you but who knows in the future I'd love to come and see you guys your YouTube channel is fantastic. I know you've only been going a short while and already you've got over 6,000 subscribers. Keep up the good work. Um, all I'd ask, if anyone would like to subscribe to my channel, All About Cars UK, and I would like to do a similar thing when we reach 5,000 subscribers, we give away a free car. So once again, Team Valley UK, your star. Love all your work. and look forward to seeing all your videos in the future. See you soon. Things with these that, that, that crack um, before the DBF, the diesel particle filter, um, and also the flexies. The because the, what we're going to remember is the the engine's moving, so there's a flexi part of the exhaust, um, and then if that cracks and it splits with the edge. So rather than if, you know the DBFs are a fortune, you know people already know that. But what we'll do with these is um, we we can fix them um, where possible. And what, what we'll do with that is uh, we'll weld the, the flange up. Um, put a strengthener bracket on it and also use a weld uh, a flexi pipe into it. It's a good repair. Uh, again, I talk about the, 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 the gearboxes. We've done a few of them now. Um, and that, that's good. So if you've got a problem with Mercedes and DPFs, you know it's worthwhile giving us a shout because um, in some cases we can't fix them. And, and again, anybody that's had a, had, have a DPF replaced, they know how expensive they are. It's um, seven thousand. Oh, it's massive. It's massive. I mean, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. A lot of things now um, are, are dealing with, with where we're at in the world with, with materials, costs, etc. I mean, we are seeing a massive increase on some of the things. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, Price of clutches, friction, uh, filters, yeah. everything's gone north. So, obviously, it's very rare we get a customer question the bill, I would suppose, but some customers normally they used to pay in X amount for their service, and this year is probably the first year we've actually increased the prices, and it's because obviously our costs have gone up, so obviously our labour rate has gone up slightly. But a lot of it is because of the price of parts. Um, I don't do as half as many parts, or 10% of the parts that Gary does, but Gary obviously keep track on them and find out that 
and you want to know why that part's continually going up but some parts here between we can quote you on the first of the month by the 30th of the month that part's going up by 10 or 15 percent um so you just got to keep an eye on it and but to be fair there's not much you can do about it you know that if you buy especially if you buy from main dealer and it is a main dealer only part either buy it or you don't you've got no choice you can't be off the road that's basically that attitude they've got um but if you went to the main dealer for that they're charging even more than we would charge you so it's unfortunate but it's just the way it is well, but like, like i say what, what we'll try and do is where possible we will try and help the customer out there to, to fix something if we can and uh, you know hence, hence on for that there um and that's that, that's 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 a control for the, and it's a company vehicle as well you know and, uh, I mean, you, you, you look at like companies at the minute, you know, I, I know everybody's pretty but I mean, you feel for some of these companies, they call it companies, companies that run vans, etc. you know, custom like that. So, so our customers, we, we, we're trying to look after them. That, that's, that's the main thing, you know, yep. I, I say that time and time again, you know, we are trying to look after them. And we, me and Gary just talked the other day about the, so that's our, our truck there, it's out pretty much every day now, yep. but it's still, it'll be using £400 a week at the minute in diesel. Yep. That's obviously that's, without the driver, that's without the tyres. It always gets it gets a six week check, gets serviced, you know, get a puncture, it's another four hundred, five hundred quid. So it's you know, and that's we've only got I think we've got three trucks and there's only really one of them on the road yeah. every day. So you've got a haulage company in your constantly four out of the week. Like there's haulage companies you've got, you know, you might be spending ten grand a Monday just to fill the trucks up. And then next Monday you'll be doing exactly the same. Um That's that's scary. That's scary. It is crazy. It is but scary. if you've got a fleet you know, a lot of people's first question to us if they've got a fleet is, oh, it's only great. To me, if, if I had a fleet, it wouldn't be the question I'd be asking. It'd be how fast can you get the vans to turn around? And I would defy any other garage in this area to get a van back to you quicker than we would. Yeah, you get something where we can't get a part. Of course, we can't. There's nothing we can do well. We can't magic the part up. But, you know, there's vans getting dropped off in the morning and they're going back in the afternoon. They might have a full service, they might have a clutch. You know, we're getting. Um, if you drop off on a Monday, you get back on a Wednesday, it's had a gearbox be built. So if you went to Mercedes main dealer or you went to a Ford main dealer or whatever, you would go into the backlog of soup for three, four months and your, your van probably wouldn't get touched. Um, and that, that's, that's, that's not us surmising the way we're actually hearing that from people. Like the oh, that's because, the feedback yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the from the customer. That's the feedback from the customer, you know. Which is, it has worked out alright for us because, you know, we normally get the customer on the back of a bad experience. So they've, they've been to a main dealer, members have had a really good relationship with them, but then, you know, they, they've ended up in a three month backlog on a van that's not very old. Um, and they've come to us and it's two days later, the van's fixed. I'm not saying that guy was going to just fit you in in two days time, but nine times out of 10 would be to get you in and then get the fault either diagnosed, repaired, or at least costed up. And you give us the year and year fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, but we're just just on that note, we're trying at the minute. Um, and again, it's not just for customers, but, but you know, for, for customers as well. You know that we will try and get you turned around within 48 and 72 hours at maximum. Part, yeah. part really is, is the thing that, that that stops from doing that. Yeah. Other than that, you know, um, I, I can pretty much 99.9% time, you know, you know, Definitely. commit to that. Yeah, commit to that one. You know, Especially yeah. with stuff like we do every day. So it's if it's a service or it's a clutch or it's a something what we would class as run of the mill then if we say 72 hours you'll, you'll have your van back on 72 hours it's just the only thing that normally like we used to come to is like what Gary was saying knock sensors and yeah. weird little parts where you think oh you know that'll be on the shelf and they'll call you back to the on a back order for two months so your car's then sitting in our car park for two months unfortunately but that's extremely rare I don't think at the moment are we waiting for anything we've got one Sorry, yeah, we've got one car on site, which, which isn't on site, it's, it's stored around the corner, uh, which we're waiting for a sensor for a, for a Renault. Oh, yeah, uh, Renault which, clear, yes, which, right, is, right. which is just, it, it, it's, up, it's absurd. I think you could probably go and make it and bring it back yourself quicker than it takes another one. Good night, 50 yeah, Cal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Callum's away home, he's away, he's away shooting, he's got his guns out. Yeah, yeah. The gun show. Yeah, he's away at the gun show. Um, yeah. yeah. Aye, oh well. Okay. Yeah. Are we done? Um, should we do these or not? Hi, come on. Yeah, let's do these. So first um, of all, we need to know why Paul's yes. van is parked in the, why is in there the a, customer car park. A, uh, that's the quickest he's put his can fan and go in the van for it. Is it? it is. Yeah, well that. Um, nice looking car, these. Um, getting a lot of bad press from Mercedes, but uh, they are nice looking car. 
Again, we talk about knock sensors. Surprise, surprise, still a black. Guess what this needs? Uh, so there, that, that needs a knock sensor. That is a little bit more of a delay on this one compared to that one. I know Mercedes are a little bit up in the air with, with some of the stuff like that. They're trying to get a hold of them, especially knock sensors. Um, so this one needs the downstream knock sensor after the, the, the SCR. Um, it is probably going to take them three or four days to get. Customers, customers waiting to uh, come back to um, with it again. The, the, these are one of the more expensive ones. So I just read some authorization of the customer, um, and then we'll get that ordered. Uh, and we'll I just can't believe knock sensors range from three hundred yeah. to a thousand pound. So I mean, I wouldn't want to buy one for the Magnum. Crazy. It'd be a two and a half grand bit of plastic yeah, that yeah. big with a little lead on it. It's yeah, yeah, this it's this one's one of the more expensive ones I've seen. It is one of the more expensive ones I've seen. What's the X3 for? Um, that was recorded earlier today. Uh, X3 with a, a fault in the power steering. Uh, recorded through the RAC. Uh, the, the, so the, R, the, the power steering. I've drove that myself, moved in the car park. Um, and the, the, the power steering is, is literally lumpy. And uh, yeah. that, that looks even better coming out of the workshop. Yeah, that looks great. That's, Does I? That's lovely. That. Have a look at that, Ed. Yeah, look at that. That looks nice. Very nice. Are you happy, Paul? Oh, always happy. What? Oh, it looks good that far. Are you happy? You gotta be happy with that. Just uh So I was just I was just sitting in the workshop, I mean just have a have a with a bit adjustable you just have a look see what you think. Look and see what it's like for um for comfort. And, uh, I, I, that, yeah. I think it's got a little bit too much front rake. Yeah. I don't really see the seats flat, and you see something a little bit in the back. I, I, think, I think you might find with that, I, I was just saying earlier on, if, if it's got a bit of weight in the back, that may be on its pump stops. Uh, we might have to lift that up a touch for you. We'll get Jim to put his wallet in the back, right. and that'll tell you exactly where the weight's going to be <laughs> if you had three tons. Because <laughs> that'll be like, can you remember the, um, what, was, what was the film? Um, the Italian job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> bullion. That's, that's a bullion. That's Jim's <laughs> bullion weight. <laughs> we'll put Jim's wallet in, it'll be the weight of the bullion. If you think, I don't know. I do. Let everything settle in. Because everything's brand new. And then bring it back to sit in the four quarter. And I think that front might come down. But I, I would expect yeah. that. Five mil? Aye. Five, five mil. If you brought that up, you would like, say five mil. So it was. Yeah. It'd look flat there. Because at the minute, that there is sitting pretty much top of the tyre. And that one's a little gap at the top of the tyre. No, normally, the rule of thumb is the rake of the van of the car. And you can see it's just a little bit. It's got chubby level. Chubby level. Oh, I'm glad. Right. Um, that's all, Jim. Put a hundred mile list. Bring it back and move. That's probably good. Yeah. Well, I'm going to see you after today. Huh? Aniseed Rock. Make sure you bring some Aniseed Rock back. Oh, Especially getting the UK from Scarborough. Look, Scarborough. Scarborough, look. Nice, good. Yeah, lovely. Right. Enjoy. Yeah. Oh, you. Because you can't use sight language. No one will miss it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Right. Yeah. See you, Paul. Hi, right, so sorry, just finishing off. Like the winner comes. <laughs> <laughs> um, BMW X3. We covered by the RAC this morning. Uh, I think this is probably going to need a rack in. This is an electric power steering. All the way from Iraq. Uh, all the way from Iraq. It's, it's, in, a, it's in right Iraq state. It's in right. Okay. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, so well, this, this, because it's been delivered this morning, we, we said earlier over there. I mean, joking apart, um, this one's been delivered to us this morning. This one will get looked at Monday. You know, so that tells you what our turnaround time is. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's not going to stand there for weeks. You know, for before look at this will yeah. get looked at Monday. Um, I tell you what has stood here for a few weeks now. This is Ivico. <laughs> that Ivico. It's a friend of mine's Ivico anyway. Um, and we will get round to look at it one day. It's pretty yeah, that long is starting to grow a tree on the back. It is. In fact, that may even be a bird's nest. I think, I think there's been two families living that. Oh, it's Jim Dixon. They migrated from the bush <laughs> up the tow bar <laughs> over the top of the bed and then into yeah. the winch. Yeah, I mean, um, but we'll get a look at that and as soon as the weather gets slightly better, so we can get a couple of days, I want that Avanti camper van done. Um, I'm hoping that Ken will do a Monday, a full Monday and a full Friday and that's just to get that flattened off, but 
it doesn't well it works like a workshop but there's nowhere to put it you'd ruin the whole workshop you pull that in so you've really got to work on it outside um we'll put that big one back in for money the 12th and never 12th and never 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 last <laughs> that's what i get told you yeah yeah and the magnum is here just you know, like the driveway so i'll just keep it here for a while keep the neighbors slightly happier on another note, um, you saw our can van in, uh, van in the car park. Uh, there will be, uh, just let you know, hopefully some of our customers are watching this. Um, we had a great success, Marvin mentioned a, a bit of time ago. We ran a little bit of a campaign on can van, um, just giving you a special offer. Um, we're just going to reintroduce that again because um, I don't think all of our customers really got the benefit of it. We didn't reach out to them enough. Hi. So um, come the 1st of April, uh, or the 3rd of April, going back to work. Um, we'll be doing an email campaign to all our customers um, just to relaunch the, and give them the benefit of the Cam Phantom. We're starting to fiddle up more now. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the, you know, they're starting to call. Uh, I, I think, I think a lot of them come from word of mouth as well. Yeah, obviously. yeah, I, that, that's, that's the thing. We um, do have, a, well, we don't have, don't push it a lot to be fair. Um, it is a product that really you, you can't not have. Um, Definitely. Any, anybody I know, if they get a car, Jimmy literally had that car, less than 24 hours, he wanted a can of phantom in, got yeah. it done, because then you know, it doesn't matter how they try to take your car, unless they literally lift that up with a crane, that car can't go anywhere. Pause, um, pause your straw, he's, he's got one on now. Because I mean, that, as I say, I mean, I, I keep on beating on about it, sorry, I'm going over the top, but I mean, now that, that camp has a good looking thing, it's the sort of thing people want to, people want, you, oh, you know, got, I mean, that, it, that yeah. one's got one on now. It's just that deterrent, um, and once people know, that, uh, well, they don't know their own, but, um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot more media. Um, I mean, we, we get statistics from the police, and if you look, anybody can look them up, you can just go on the. Uh, so, if you, we would look at Northumbria Police or Durham Constabulary, and you would look at the, the the crime figures on sort of vehicle theft. Um, and if you look, there's another one that's the vehicle theft with key. So, they've actually somehow managed to get the key. And there's another statistic without the key. The numbers are unbelievable. I think I mentioned before, it was something like. Um, so Admiral Assurance have, I believe, 60 or 70 Range Rovers a week go missing. And that's what, so that's what they don't get back. So they, they think the figures probably double that and then the police get some back. But there's more than 70 go missing and never seen again. Um, Transvans, that was slightly higher. I think that was 70, 75 Transvans a week go missing, don't come back. So that's not only all your tools in the back of the van or it's all your kids seats, it's all the stuff that you just think nothing of. You know, some people have got two or three hundred pounds of sunglasses in the glove box, you know, and they've just been drove off and you're never going to see that again. Um, we kind of like put forward any, any more really, you know, if you want to keep your vehicle, get a can phantom fitted. Remember that if you ever come to sell the vehicle, if you want, we can have Paul remove it for you and put in a new vehicle. Or to be fair, most people want a brand new one fitted in the new vehicle because it's a, it's a really good selling point for your old vehicle. So if you're selling your Range Rover, um, the new customer sort of thing on the new owner is going to want one fit anyway so you're better off just saying listen you pay for my new can phantom and, and keep on the vehicle and again i, I think do, some we touched on as well but company vehicles as well you know as we've said here you, you know there's, there's what one two three there's four four commercial vehicles on site and company vehicles on site um if you've got any company vehicles and you want them protected as well you know bear in mind that you give us a call um you, you know you'll benefit from the same offer as, as all our customers are um just to finish off so a third of april um all our customers will be getting an email um just to offer them give them the offer again and we'll follow up and just just to see what our thoughts are and i think the other thing is like, like Marv says is that possibly some of the, the problem is that there's not enough information out there so that, you know we'll, yeah. we'll give you any information that you need how it works what you can do with it etc etc um the third of april that'll be going so if there's any customers um, want to take advantage of that you know that you'll be getting the email um get in touch yeah. i think yeah. a, a lot of people with a can fat as well we've been asked a question and we always laugh and think that it was a ridiculous question but actually when you look and think about it obviously the customer hasn't been informed yet so they don't know it. a lot of people think you're getting a keypad like no. old-fashioned on the dashboard you put a pin number in when we say pin number it's not it's something that's on the it could be like the, all the buttons that are fitted on the car so it could be the steam the buttons on the steering wheel your volume uh, buttons for your windows, handbrake, uh, radio buttons, any buttons that's on your car, 99 times out of 10, uh, 100, sorry, you can use that button as a pin number. So, um, off the top of your head, you can literally pull your handbrake twice, you know, 
push number one and two on the radio and that could be your pin number and it can be from anywhere from four digits um, I think up to 250 digits long you know what I mean it's endless um, a lot of people go between four and six digits and obviously remember that pin number is completely unique to you if you want to change if you want us to put a pin number in and you want to go away the next day and change it that's totally fine there's an app on your phone you can log on change the pin number whatever you want um, change it every day if you know it doesn't make a difference to us once it's left us you know the pin number and you get the basically like a security credit card so if anything goes wrong you can use the number on that credit card give us a call and we'll walk you through step by step how to how to fix the problem if you ever got any yeah. are we done for the day G? I think we're done for the day M <laughs> M? M? Q? Jim. Q? Q. <laughs> thanks very much for watching um, Gary's doing most of it and he'll probably do it tomorrow as well because I'll Oh no no no. <laughs> no 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 put Jimmy on it Jimmy oh. you're doing it tomorrow mate you're doing it tomorrow's video I'll shave I'll shave <laughs> Get rid of the pressure. I hopefully it'll just let the sweat feed off easier. Right, thanks for watching. Cheers. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome back. It is Friday afternoon. Um, time's gotten on. Cracky, can't see the clock for me. Never mind. Um, last year, the very, very busy week and a very, very busy month, which, month, which I'll come to at the end. Um, so, just another usual day. A lot of work going on in the workshop today. Um, so we will start here. Um, very, very nice uh, disco for this one in Buckingham Blue. I think this is possibly one of the cleanest examples I've seen. Um, customers brought in to us the cars pulling quite strongly to the left, and also it's got a drone in noise. Um, this near side front wheel bearings collapsed. We, we again, I, I, I say this a lot, but we, we do do a few of these. Wheel bearing, it's a it's a wheel bearing uh, hub and flange. Uh, there's so it you. It, that needs replaced. Once we've done that, uh, we'll then track it afterwards. It's had a bit of work done by the looks of it. The bottom arms look new. Again, um, I think on, on the videos we see it's prone to bottom arms, um, suspension work, etc. Um, but yeah, hub on that one. Once the hub's on, uh, then it'll get tracked after that. And that is, uh, and that is good to go. Uh, just waiting for the customer ring back to authorise us to do the repair work on that one. But like I said, Buckland Blue, first time I've seen that colour, I think that's a, that's a smashing looking car. That's a very, very clean example. Uh, testament to you on that one. Um, we know about that one that's uh, in progress at the moment. Not a great deal to talk about with that one. Um, and he's in the middle of an MOT. Uh, again, I, although I know things, aren't as, as things are, are mixed up a little bit more with MOTs, but historically, March is still quite a strong month for MOTs. Hence, um, hence Andy's on with that one. Uh, another, another regular customer, good customer. We've looked after that one for a few years. Uh, it's just getting MOT at the minute. We haven't got a report back on this because I think he's only clocked on about 10 minutes ago. Uh, so that one's, uh, that one's in process. Um, Multi-Connect, you, you'll have seen these vans in the workshop. Um, again, a really, really good customer of ours, as, as they all are. Um, so this one's had to be recovered this morning. The, um, it's been covered, recovered with no drive. Uh, and if we uh, if we come around the front head, uh, I'm not sure if Ken's got it out yet or not. But um, so this drive shaft's failed. Um, so what's happened is you, you can hear it there. Okay. So again, for those that don't know, the drive shaft you've got a triax joint and your CV joint. Um, it looks like it's got a, an internal failure of the, the CV joint. Uh, you can hear by that there to, uh, the shaft's just turned in there. Um, so that's that, that's getting the drive shaft. We've ordered a drive shaft for that. Um, we'll get that uh, replaced. I think the drive shaft will be here Monday. We've ordered uh, direct from the dealer, so it's a dealer part only. Um, so that's on its way. Um, I think it was this very ramp we did one last week was the other side. Uh, so this is the Peugeot Expert, same as the Citroen Dispatch. Uh, whether or not it's, they're prone to a little bit of a drive shaft problem or not, uh, there could be, or it's just coincidence that we've had two in the same week. Uh, opposite sides, of course. Um, but I mean, you, you know, vans work hard. You know, they really do work hard. And if you can imagine, uh, this is a this is a 1.6 HDI. So if you think with a 1.6 HDI, you know, it, it does a lot of work. Um, you know, it's, as does bad, the gearbox. Bad driving, yeah. Bad driving, Possibly, <laughs> but uh, uh, we'll, we'll edit that one out for the for the customer. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, uh, the the ambulance is back in process. Uh, we've uh, had a look into this further. 
we're going to put some more parts in the gearbox. Sorry, Ed, I'm, I'm, I'm just stand still and stopping me. So we're going to put some more parts in the gearbox. Uh, Mike will strip the gearbox. Uh, we're going to put a, a, a clutch and a flywheel in it as well, uh, just because it's, it's showing signs of wear and tear. Uh, that's a bearing set uh, and some uh, the gear cables. The gear cables, they're, they're, they're worn. Um, it's not really to do with the problem that the van's got or, or the ambulance has got, but it's just they're worn. So with it being an ambulance, what I do my utmost to keep this on the road, you know, at all times where possible, you know. Um, so because of that, we'll put some gear change cables on as well. When you, you have to take them on and off, and the gearbox has probably been out this van maybe two, three times. You know, it's, it's, so, you know, they just start wearing, the, the joints start wearing. Um, so they're, they're on the way as well. Um, and then we'll, the parts will be here ready for Monday. So once we've got all the parts, um, that's back in the diary in the schedule for Michael to put it back together on Monday. Um, milk float, we've talked about that one a lot. Uh, as you can see, Callum's in process doing the repairs. Um, that's just a matter of, uh, of, of getting the van finished off. Uh, everything's here for that. Door handle, door handle's done. Um, he's doing the handbrake at the moment. You can see the centre consoles on the, on, the, uh, on, the win on the windscreen, on the dashboard there, um, for to do the repairs. He's fixing the handbrake on it. Then after that, we'll have um, the two front tyres and the, uh, the front brakes to do on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that one. Um, vehicles in progress are finished for... Yeah, a lot of these have gone through the workshop and they're already ready to go. To go. Um, we talked about this one yesterday. Knock sensors fitted to it. So... As I say, one of the things you have to do with these is, once the, once the knock sensor is replaced, you then have to um, erase the fault codes, you then have to teach the knock sensor in a, 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 during the learning process, um, and then obviously yeah, you, you erase the faults from there. Uh, as you can see, Paul's just come back off road test on that. When, when we do problems like these, you know, I mean, if it's a routine service, um, you know, brake work, maybe it's tyres and that, they'll probably do about two, three miles. But with these, with these vans or, or cars or whatever it is, we'll always try and do a decent amount of miles before they give back the customer. Um, one of the common pitfalls is when, you, when you're doing diagnostic work and replacing parts, can be that the, you know, you've got to do a few miles and it might, it might come back on the customer. Um, so we do, you know, maybe 20, 30 miles on, on a job like this, just to, just to make sure that we're doing as much as we can so that, that the cars or the van's fixed. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's good to go. Customer will be about half four to pick that up. Um, lovely open car. Uh, Jaguar being in for routine service. Uh, two years old, first regular routine service today. Uh, again, very routine, run of the mill. Not a great deal to tell you about that one. Uh, other than, yeah, like I say, a very, very nice clean car. Um, so that, that, that's good to go. Yeah, service is all completed and ready to go. Um, the ones uh, in the background here, um, we've already talked about these a lot, so I'll not go into great depth, other than to say these are scheduled for, um, for next week. Uh, this one is actually, we've brought this forward in the schedule a bit. Uh, we are we're scheduled, we're originally due to get the gearbox out of it um, on Tuesday. However, uh, we've got a couple of technicians coming in over the weekend, or Saturday rather, to do some overtime. So we're going to put this one in. It's a kind of... The reason for that is that it's not that it's any more important than any other job, it's just what it gives us a head start. So because with this, if we can get it stripped over the weekend, we're ready for Monday morning to get the parts, um, the parts list ready to go. We can get, it, get, get the parts ordered for, and it just speeds the process up. And of course, next week, we've got a short week with it being the bank holiday, because uh, we're not here. And again, just, just you know, our regular customers, if you're watching this, please be aware that we are here next week, Monday to Thursday. We're closed on the Friday for the bank holiday weekend and want to back to work on the Tuesday. Okay, all right. So if you do need to get in contact with us, please please do so before that, because we, we won't be here over the bank holiday. Um, a, a little course here. Uh, we buy rang up, oh, sorry, text us this morning. They've uh, they've come to try and start this one in the yard and, and it wouldn't start. So that's that's here with us now. Corsa, um, so that needs a diagnostic. Uh, it's, it's We've had, again, it's got the two iron. We've picked that up this morning for we buy. And that one will go through the workshop on Monday to get diagnosed to see what the see what the problem is with it, and uh, and then take it from there. Yeah, okay. Again, sorry, Ed, I'm just going to turn around. These ones here, these are all in process. Um, that one has had the shutter fix in now, um, so that one will probably be going back the customer. Might be the day, depending on on if uh, the customer can come get it. If not, that'll go back on Monday. And the other two, 
the engine at the end there's here for that. These, these are work in progress. They're so, they're, you know, not going with that. Hyundai iX35. Yeah, iX35. Uh, again, another routine service. Very, very easy job. Um, clean car um, uh, with that one. Routine service. Couple of reports on it. Back brakes are starting to get a little bit corroded. And that's probably in keeping with the, the aging, aging mileage of the, of the car. Other than that, um, you know, it's gone straight through the workshop, no problems at all. Uh, Range Rover Vogue. I've got a bit of a soft spot for this car because I think this car is probably one of the nicest Range Rovers I've seen. Of course, it's, it's opinion and preference, I suppose. Um, I think it's just because of the colour combination. Uh, so again, regular service. Uh, it's also had a, a, a worn light on. Now, now, we've had a look at this a couple of times and it's been an intermittent fault. It'll often put the, the light on, the diagnostic light, and then it'll give a, a DPF me error message saying that the DPF's full, um, but then it'll, it'll go away randomly. However, um, what's, what's transpired is it's the, the light that's been on. Uh, it's had a diagnosis, and on these, I, th I think there was in it, one in a couple of weeks ago, it was a Sport. So in the middle of the, the V of the engine there, you've got the, the intake manifold and a throttle body. The, the, the throttle body's carbon up, and what's happened with that is that the flap sticks. So the, the flap should snap open, but in this case, it's been jamming shut. So that obviously disrupts the airflow, uh, which affects obviously the DPF, etc. So throttle body's been replaced along with the routine service today. Uh, we've regenerated the, the diesel particle filter um, and road tested it. And then, uh, you, you know, we've, 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 we've rolled it again. This one's had uh, a, good, a good test drive, uh, probably about 10 miles or so. Um, and then uh, it's, it's ready to go. Yeah, uh, like I say, just, just a nice car, that one. Lo lovely car, that. Yeah, just a little bit of soft spot for it. Um, we've got a couple over here. Um, the van's just waiting for authorization on the radiator. Uh, that needs a radiator in. Um, the Land Rover next to it, that looks like it's got a, a, another, another one with a, with a compressor fault. Um, so the suspension's not right on that. I'm not going to work all the way over it, but the suspension's not right on that. Um, so we're busy getting prices and availability of the compressor. Um, it does need a little bit of that work, so we'll compile an estimate for the customer, go back to the customer, and uh, hopefully get some authority to do that. Uh, NEPS van, van being in for MOT. Um, suffice to say, it does want, want, want a little bit of work. Um, Again, vans work hard, uh, so that's the, the, the failure has just been put on my desk for that one. I'll compile a list, get the parts ordered for it, um, and we'll get that one done as quickly as possible. Again, we might do that one over the weekend because it's important, you know, we'll keep these, uh, these commercial vehicles on the road. Yeah, so that's that one. Uh, the BMW we talked about yesterday, again, that's, that's not been looked at yet, but it's in the schedule. Um, Peugeot. That, that one there, so this one keeps on developing a gear change fault. There's a, there's a, a, te there's a TSB, a technical services bulletin for them with a fault with the gear. So it's, it's the, it's the semi-automatic gearbox and that. Um, there's a problem with the, uh, the, if you like, what, the unit or the, 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 the gear stick mount at the bottom. Um, but the problem is we're having trouble getting one that are on a little bit of a delay. So with that one, again, it's just in limbo at the minute. So we'll get, we're getting prices of prices and availability as you always do. Um, and then obviously we'll, we'll go back and we'll give the customer all the information rather than go back in bits and pieces, um, you know, as regards that. So yeah, just, just, just parts again, which is a shame, you know, it, you know, it holds us up and we'll see it a lot. We'll see it a lot. Little Lotus, um, this is one of our customers. Uh, he's got this one. He's got the. You might have seen it on, on a video as well. He's got the. Um, he's got the the crossbow as well. Um, been in for service today. Very very low mileage every year. I think. I don't think it's done a hundred thousand miles since since last year MOT. But again, it's through the workshop already, ready to collect. Uh, it's had its routine service today, and also the uh, the MOT test. Um, just waiting for for that one to be collected. Um, we see, we're starting to see a lot of this. Um, so I don't know if you, you want to have a look in it. So this originally started off life as a as a as a van, but what's what's happening is the customers in the uh, in the process of trans if, what converting it into a camper. Um, so if if you have a look in there, you can see he's already started doing it. The windows are in in the side doors. He's put the skylight in. Um, it's it's got, he's got the panel ready to go on the back. Um, what we're seeing a lot of this, I mean, I, I think there's, 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 a, there's, there's more of a demand for it in the, in the UK. There's a lot of people doing this, you know, um, camper vans. We, we're starting to see a lot of them more coming through our workshop. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because I think we're probably one of the only garages in the North East that's got the ramps and the, and the capability to look after them. And no disrespect to the other ones, the other garages. Um, 
but yeah, um, so th this one's in for Monday. Customer has dropped off. He's not using it because um, because of what it is, because uh, and he's not using it because he's in the middle of of, um, of converting it. So he's dropped with us for thirty. That one's in for MOT test. Uh, it does need some brake work. You already knows that, um, but we'll MOT it first. As I said earlier on, make sure that we go back the customer with complete and final costings before before we go any further. Okay, but that one's in for Monday. That one's Monday. Okay. So thank you everybody. Um, a little bit of a mixed up week. Uh, obviously Marvin's had to be away for a few days uh, this week. Um, so you've had to put up with me. Hopefully it's not been too bad for you. So I've enjoyed it. Um, hopefully you will enjoy the content as well. Um, I just want to say at this point, uh, we the, for some reason March has been a really, really strong month. Uh, on a, for a lot of reasons. Um, and that's uh, from our regular customers, your continued support. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Or we really appreciate it. The new customers that we're starting to see now, again, thank you. You know, thank you for coming to us and trusting us. If you've been referred or, you, you, you know, if it's off review seen, whoever's given us them reviews or them referrals, thank you to them as well. Um, our free customers, you know, they're, they're really important as, as all of our customers are. So thank you very much. Um, all of that put together is, is really give us a really strong month. Um, and all the staff here, you know, uh, we said it earlier, but everybody has really, really worked hard as they always do. But we've had a really strong month. So thank you for everybody's continued support. Um, and just um, hopefully we may catch up with you soon. Thanks again. OK. And remember, just to remind Ed's just giving us the thumbs up behind there. I thought he was just saying that was well done. <laughs> no, but please like, share, subscribe. Remember, there's a car to win at the end of it. Somebody's going to be very, very lucky and win that uh, that little, what is it, the little Fiat Panda? Is it the IP, the LP, the HP? I think the badge on the on the back of them. <laughs> yeah, 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 there we all go. Just whatever it is, but aye, yeah. Keep on watching. Really, really enjoying it. Uh, thanks very much.